Hey guys, it's AJ and it's Wednesday, and if you don't know or if you don't read the news, the California Supreme Court upheld Prop 8. So basically what that means is, if you're gay, you can't get married, but if you did get married in the little window that they did have open, your marriages are still valid. So it's kind of like if you didn't jump on that bandwagon and get married during that little window, you're screwed because now you can't. But, I mean, in a good way, 18,000 people were able to get married, but for the thousands of other people who want to get married, they can't. It's kind of a fucked up situation, don't you think? And so last night in Long Beach, we all had a little protest. So um, here's a little clip of that. We have to say something. Hey guys. Something! It's AJ and Melody, and we're at the Prop 8 protest part two. <laughs> Continuum. Protesting for equal rights. We just thought you guys would want to see. Melody has a sign on her back. <laughs> and so let's go ahead and get on with Wednesday. The first question is, how much does your sexuality have an impact on your life? And one of the uh, suggestions was finding a job. And I always find it difficult to find a job because on my job applications, um, it says my name, Amanda and in parentheses AJ so most of the time when people will call me back for a job interview they call and they ask for me and they hear my voice and on paper like everything looks great but then I go to the job interview and I walk in and it's not like I'm wearing a dress and some heels like I'll wear a button-down shirt and dress pants and man shoes so I totally have that stacked up against me so let's say I'm like the world's best snake charmer and I've snake charmed for 20 years and I can make snakes dance like nobody else. But then there's some hot chick who comes in and it, it's a guy who's interviewing, let's say, and she's, you know, done it for a couple years, but she doesn't have the qualifications that I do. Nine times out of 10, they're going to give the job to somebody who looks good. And that sucks because that's totally unfair and, um, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced that as well, and if you have, then that's great. But then there's the argument that a lot of people have that, you know, it, you can't say because you're butch you have that stacked up against you. But seriously, you guys, if your mom or dad were interviewing me for a job and another hot person, not hot, but just somebody who fits into society standards of somebody who presents himself in a normal type of way came in, they're going to get the job. So definitely that is something that... Um, I have against me as far as society um, um, standards go, definitely, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that, and it sucks because I always think about, you know, I want to do this and I want to do that, but the way I look really, really puts me into a little pigeonhole of what, what can I actually do, and you know, there's jobs out there that I'm like, this would be an awesome job, but then when it comes down to an interview, I'm just, I get, I get scared that they're not going to hire me because the way I look, like, you have a great personality and I'm qualified up the ass to do the job, but when it comes down to it, I think looks looks may overrule everything. You can agree, disagree. I'm curious to know what you guys have to say about that. The second question is, lesbians are known for moving fast into relationships and you hauling it. And I have to say that I'm guilty of doing that and I'm sure a lot of you guys are. And for some of you, it's worked out great. And for some of you, it's totally bombed and backfired on you but I think that we turn into these U-Haul lesbians and I don't know if there's gay guys that watch this video do you guys U-Haul or I don't know what you'd call it like Mazda miyadi ing or something I don't know but girls seem to have this attraction with each other where we're just inseparable for some reason and, and we need each other's company and I don't know how it is in the straight world like guys need their space and girls wait around for them but I feel like two girls meet and and, and that's it. Like, I don't know. It's kind of like slumber party syndrome or something. We just always want to be together. And I guess because you're always spending so much time together, it only makes sense to live together. But I think once you live together, that's when it becomes hard because we move in with knowing each other for a couple months and then you don't know they like the toilet seat up or down or they like the toilet paper going one way or the other. So we do have that stereotype of being U-Haul lesbians. But I mean, how do we break that? Not moving in together with each other or I don't know I don't know how it is in the straight world but I definitely know we do have that uh, that damn label up against us so 
Um, do I believe that it's true? Yes, we do U-Haul and we're all guilty of doing it. And I think that maybe if we took the time to get to know each other, because the thing is with lesbians, like we meet somebody and we swear to God they're the last girl on the planet that we're ever gonna meet and we need to move in with them right away or we're never gonna find anybody else who's gonna be equally as cool or awesome as they are. But that's not the case and then you guys, I'm old and I've done it and I think that we should just take our time and get to know the people before we move in with them. That way you don't end up with baggage and cats and shit. Yeah, so that's my Wednesday video. Um, I'll see you guys next week and have a good weekend. Oh, lastly, about the hate crime that happened in San Diego. It's a terrible tragedy that happened and I really think that we should teach tolerance to everybody and uh, it's an important video to pass around so I'll put the link over there and um, have a good week and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.